Uh, my name is Sandy Corkin, um, and I'm with the firm of Ernst & Young, also known as EY. I'm really happy to be here to speak with you all today because it's a topic that's really pretty close to uh, my heart, actually. I'm talking about real estate technology and innovation and defining your needs for connectivity. And when we talk about connectivity, we're not only talking about phones and things of that nature, we're talking about being connected to a space, whether it's uh, visual or messaging or phones or anything of that nature as well. And it kind of struck me when I saw the tagline for future offices, which was collaboration at play, uh, because in the last couple of years, uh, a new team has been formed at EY, our team, and it's called Ready Real Estate Technology and Innovation. And it is um, based on collaboration and innovation, and it's really amazing. It's, we've really been able to achieve quite a bit in the last couple of years. And so what I want to talk to you about today is how this team was formed, what we do, and why it's been so important, and why it's been so exciting and actually a lot of fun as well along the way. So here's our typical disclaimer. Um, you know, I'm crazy. It's not necessarily the views of the firm, and uh, etc. Uh, by the way, we will be having the slides available. If you'd like some, you can um, email me. My email uh, information is at the end. One of the things that I like to do with the uh, slides also is that there will be additional information on there that I may not speak to um, in great detail, but I wanted to have them available to you as a takeaway, depending on where you are in your firm, maybe to give you some um, food for thought, some ways of handling some of the challenges that you have, and so we include a lot bit of extra things for you. So when we started this journey toward uh, this new team, uh, we had to think about what was going on and where does this all begin and why is there even a need for this type of group. In our situation, it started with our real estate team. The real estate team is a really an, um, a very strong, uh, robust group and they've been working for a number of years on a new concept, which is EY at work. And you'll be able to see the details on here. Basically, it's combining all the different things, including mobile, including technology, including space adjustments, um, all the employee experience, all part of the new uh, functionality called EY at work. So for the real estate team, and I want to call out the 2012 on there for you, because I wanted to show you when the firm began thinking about what kind of space did they want, what engagement did they want on the uh, side of the employees, why was it so important? And it's interesting to me that even though this was in 2012 when we started it, this is as true now as it was back then. You can, whether it's changing workforce demographics, whether it's age or uh, skill set or diversity, uh, the war for talent, uh, most of the offices that we had had previously were the typical traditional accounting firms, uh, older buildings, center of the cities, those ki ty types of things. Um, you never really saw people really get excited about rooms with no windows, dim lighting, uh, people packed together, the partners on the exterior, that sort of thing. Not much greenery kind of a little heavier type of traditional buildings. So the vision, as you can see, went from the traditional work to the mobile work, and now EY at work. And I'm really proud of the real estate team uh, for what they've been able to accomplish in just a short time. Um, in just a few years, they've gone to 175 locations have already been transformed. We have about another 80 in the pipeline right now, and all total, we have about 175,000 employees that are experiencing the new EY at work, some of which you'll be able to see in my presentation. So, what's missing? Everything's looking great, the space is great, there's light coming in from the outside, into the interior, no more partners on the edge, collaboration spaces, so what is missing? What's missing is the extra pieces, the extra touch, the extra enhancements 
of the most innovative technology available that you can find. And the Ready Team was really formed to be able to bring real estate up to that next level and to make the spaces um, as innovative as possible. We wanted to make the transition between what you have at home and what the employees have at home into the, when you walk into the door of your offices, a much better, dis, a much better uh, experience, less of a discrepancy. I'm sure, how many of you now have like two-year-olds that have the iPads, that have the animal sounds or the alphabets, things like that going on? Um, probably you have these dongles, your keychains, uh, that you don't need to put your key in your, off in your um, car to keep going. Um, Alexa talks to you, you talk to Alexa, smart buildings, ring doorbells, you can go on and on. All the employees have those things at their fingertips right now. Do you really want them to walk out of their home, get in their car, walk into the door of an office that they spend so much time in with not at least something approaching that? And that's one of the really impetuses for the Ready Team, and it's the real estate technology innovation ready. And we are all the time. So how do we get started? Uh, one of the things that we started with was, okay, we know we need this, we know we need the enhancements, we, need, we know we need it to, it to happen fast. Because if you stop and think about the basic, typical vendor engagements, either a vendor calls you, you start the dialogue, they show you what you have, maybe it's smoke and mirrors, maybe it's real, uh, do they know how to handle your back-end infrastructure so that it doesn't interrupt your current uh, IT infrastructure? All those types of things. You don't really know, so you go through months of the process, then you go through an RFP, and then if you're lucky, you pass all the independence pieces with your firm. Eventually, the vendor agrees that you make a negotiation, and they're very happy to give you, in probably a year and a half, some type of prototype and you happily, well, maybe not so happily, turn over about three or four million dollars. Months. So what we wanted to do was take the process from here to here. And I'm really excited to say we did. And it's been great fun along the way for the team. So we took a look at the beginnings. You know, expectations are quite different now from employees that you're hiring especially millennials, but not only millennials, because it doesn't matter if you're 22 or if you're 72. People still love the engagement. They love the new technology. You know, you talk to your uh, TV remote at home and tell it what you want. You know, you would think that a corporation with much more resources maybe could approach something like that. Well, we're working on it. So now in current and future, we have, we're working on different types of solutions, uh, mobile experiences, visual, um, AI, bots, all those types of things. But engagement with the people, uh, when you walk into Home Depot, if you have the Home Depot on your app, anybody on your phone have the Home Depot app? If you have you turned on your location services? When you walk in the door at Home Depot, what does it say? Hi, Sandy, we have sales on aisle 10 or whatever it may tell you. So we wanted to approach, begin to try to, in, try to incorporate some of those types of everyday experiences that people are having now into when they walk into the offices. We wanted them to be, uh, uh, have a feeling that they were connected uh, electronically, technically, visually, in every way. Along the way, our real estate team is working working so well to get things like um, air quality, lighting quality, all of those other types of things that contribute greatly and actually increase productivity by a number of percentage points, uh, as people are being able to see now. And if you were in the biophilia, any of the biophilia conferences or hearing some of the uh, information that was given at this conference, then you understand what we're talking about. So our mission really was to be the leaders, not just 
okay at what we do or okay for EY. We just decided if we're going to do this, we're going to do it all the way. So we wanted to be the leaders in the identification, implementation, and the deployment and support of all the new types of innovative technologies that would be appropriate for this type of area. So we wanted to identify any trends, any disruptors, engage with global subject matter experts, incorporate mobile into things, incorporate visual into things, and probably one of the most in, enjoyable parts uh, for our team, the way we, they picked the team, let me step back a second, was that they identified a core group, a strong core group of people with strong subject matter expertise and skill sets in whatever category fields that they had, uh, people that were uh, passionate about technology, uh, passionate about collaboration and innovation. In the last few years, one of the things that the firm has really um, supported and really pushed into like the culture itself from the top down and the bottom up is innovation. And it's not just developing something new, it's a mindset of awareness that there are possibilities out there and potential for innovation. Innovation can be simply as um, updating processes and that sort of thing. In our case, we wanted innovation, the, the best technology, the latest technology, that sort of thing. So basically what they did was uh, they assembled this group, which is I'm part of the team, and basically they took our shackles off and they just said, go. So at that point in time, we just took the uh, mandate and we just really ran with it. So we would do things like we began taking a look at who were the top 10 vendors in any of these venues, any of these types of functionalities, whether it was mobile or uh, bots or AI or digital branding, anything of that nature, uh, sensors, uh, being able to use not have to use your swipe cord every time and swipe. Frictionless movement through the spaces and through their days. Ease of collaborating with their people. Not just the, 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 the building, but all the accompanying aspects of a person's life and things in the building. And then we would determine which ones we wanted to talk to. We talked to them quickly. We quickly, we had the expertise to be able to identify if what they were telling us was just a simple idea to start with, because all of a sudden, if you remember back a few years when sensors came on the, on the horizon, it was like everybody went crazy. It was like a new thing. And so all of a sudden you had, you know, 25 vendors saying that they were the one that could help you be your solution that would solve everything. It would tell you your utilization down to the second. It would be easy to do. Well, come to find out, a lot of these companies had not prepared for differences in the IT infrastructure in all the different uh, corporations. Uh, they had not considered, does their, do their sensors um, for locating, do, are they compatible with 4G phones? So you had situations where you had firms come in, convince the corporation over a period of time that they were it, they would deploy it. We had one instance that we know of, uh, documentable, that for two years and uh, two floors, it was $3 million and they got it in and realized it didn't support 4G phones. Okay, so we wanted to make sure that we went through this, we knew what we were talking about, we knew they knew what they were talking about, and in all the different aspects of the verticals I'll show you, that's what we did all the way through. Everybody just went, we started going to conferences everywhere. We did not wait for people to come to us. We did not wait for the science, the new uh, ideas or the new trends and disruptors. We went out, researched, and found them, and moved quickly. We moved quickly to understand them. We moved quickly to determine if they knew what they were talking about. They, we moved quickly to decide if it would be useful to have a pilot or not. And then we did deploy the pilot. If the pilot worked well, 
then we scaled it up. If it worked well, we slipped it in to operation, operations. And we'll give you a look at some of those kinds of things coming up in a few minutes. Uh, if we failed, it was okay to fail, but you fail fast and you fail forward. So while you may fail, you'll learn from that. And I'll give a shout out to uh, Bill, I think it was Bill Morton before he had mentioned that as well. And it has been marvelous and great fun for us. And of course, the employees that use the spaces really absolutely love it. And interestingly enough, we have a large uh, group of um, remote workers and flexible working and that sort of thing. And if you're a firm with auditing and so forth, you're out a lot. But now the employees are coming back to the office for the community, the social aspects of it. So they may be working all over the place, but now they're really happy and enjoying the workspace. So you have to have a little bit of a plan. So they didn't, we weren't, they didn't totally cut us loose. But the team started thinking about, okay, let's get something simple but efficient that we can really move quickly on. And that would make sense and cover the things that we wanted to do. And so, as you can see, we, we, we had our strategy about what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it. Then we talked about uh, the it, continuous enhancement. Incubation is more like the pilots and that sort of thing. And then delivery and operations, then go. And then go on to the next one. Make sure that's good, solid, works with the firm infrastructure, uh, does, is not inhibited by any situations with the IT, Wi-Fi structure or whatever. Now, I'm not going to go through all this. Aren't you glad? <laughs> Unless you want me to. Anybody want me to go? No, OK. So what this is, I put this in here so that you can have it uh, as a takeaway. And we really just kind of wanted to give you an idea. So if you look around at the top, what you see is uh, the kind of uh, ideas, some of the things that we wanted to really think about. Can we do this? how can we do it, so forth. And then you see five verticals here. These are the five main areas we wanted to think about it with. Uh, the smart workplace, physical access, visual communications, workplace management, which is uh, my vertical that I lead, and then AV technology. Underneath that, what are types of things underneath each of those that we really wanted to address? So, we decided on four main areas that we really wanted to focus on. Uh, one of them was access. So anything having to do with location building information, the ease of being able to move in and out of buildings rather than the old ways. And we're actually doing some uh, nice pilots on that in the UK right now. And trying to have mobile as a point of entry to everything as much as you can. Then engagement. How can we increase the excitement of the teams, of the people, uh, interface wherever we can with visual communication? Uh, we want all the things that are visual to them to actually have a point and benefit them and provide data in new and exciting and creative ways. More like when you walk into the offices, it's more like when you walk in, it's more like, wow, this this place is really nice and it's, it's really up to date. It's really on the cutting edge of the technology. That's kind of the way you want people to feel when they walk into your offices. Then the interaction. We wanted touch screens as much as possible, wherever it could. Um, any interactive office portals that we could have and people-centric services. So it's a more of a, a, a kind of a bit of a luxury feel a little bit. You're not really, we wanted to just give them that feel. And the lady today was talking about care for people, making, having people think, feel that you care about them. And a lot of what we're doing, while some of it's technology, does contribute in conjunction with the plants in the offices. You cannot underestimate light entering from outside, penetrating into the inter, uh, areas of the office, you can't underestimate those kinds of things for the overall effect. Another is automation. We wanted to optimize and automate everything that we can. And nicely, we have a few uh, groups in EY 
that actually um, do AI and bots. And in most all of our systems, we already have multiple bots. Bots now are common in our, in our working world. And it, they work great, and the AI is amazing as well. We're just kind of getting started with the AI, but the bots are now really common and commonly used. So this is our current organization today. I left the names out. But you can kind of see it's really lean, but it works really well. So each of us, there's a lead in each one, and each of us have a, a person or two working with it. Because remember, we don't just identify it and implement it, we support these as well on an ongoing basis. And actually, uh, I'm fortunate to have two of my teammates here uh, that represent two of the other verticals, and they're seated at the back, uh, Paul Westenberger and Robert Bardwell. So thanks, guys, for coming. And again, this is in the slide deck. Now, one thing I want to mention to you, um, this is our solution for the challenges that we've had. What I guess what I would like you to take away from this is to begin to think creatively about your own solutions. You know, it's not just getting three people from facilities and two people from reservations and to this and putting together that. It's more about the mindset of the people that you are getting on the team. And collaboration and innovation is key. You have to have that to move forward and to move forward swiftly. And then you need the knowledge and the skill sets of the people themselves to be able to quickly evaluate the vendors and those pieces so that you know that you can trust them. You know that they have a real product, that they're not just wanting you to help them develop their idea. So what I wanted to do now, all of those things that we've been talking about, whether it's the space or the light or the digital branding or the messaging, I wanted to give you a feel for what's actually in production and that we've been able to bring real estate up to the next level over the last couple of years. And these are actually in production and most of them will have the name of the location underneath. So we have our standard video walls and a lot of companies are starting to put some of that in to their locations already. You know, we're not the only place that's trying to uh, modernize and uh, become much better technically. And so some of these things you'll see that are, they have them. But remember, we're already at 175 of our locations and 80 more in the pipeline, so we're just moving forward. Uh, this is in uh, London, and this is one of the collaboration rooms. And the typical, as we've talked, different people have talked through how you use it, sound barriers, uh, impromptu spaces. But also, you can start getting a feel for the look of what we're going through. There is light everywhere, light goes to the center. Now these are some of the custom video walls that we're doing. And it's so, it's so interesting, so on the left is Hoboken. And then on the right is Dallas. And I mean, I love fireplaces, so I don't know about you guys, but it's really nice in there. It gets pretty cold in Jersey and Hoboken in the middle of the winter with snow outside. And this is actually like a fireplace with a crackling in the whole nine yards. I mean, you can make it a little bit more business-like if you want. But this is, G, this, is G, this is just examples, sorry. And then you can look past them in the back. You have some cushiony chairs and some different kinds of things. And by the way, people love these full-size walls, these full-size screens. You know, you walk up to them, you have so much information. It's presented in a, a wonderful, uh, creative way. And it's really immersive. You know, it's really immersive when you see it in person. Uh, here's one in San Jose, California. And all the screens that you see and the messaging is very, very purposeful. So it could be, it's great for branding, but it's also very good to be able to highlight certain positive aspects of the firm or what the firm is doing. Because let's face it, everybody gets, you know, 100 emails a day at least. And the firm will usually send out things, you know, it's, EY Connect Day, here's the day that you go and can work with your group, community service, uh, 
Ernst and Young just won another award, and this is the award. These things come to you in the emails. How many people see that? But if you see it on a wall like that, it sticks with you. Uh, again, this is another, another, another part of our offices in uh, the UK. And you can see the treadmill desk. And I don't know if I could do, I, mean, I like them. And I like to see people doing them. I, I'm just not quite as elephant coordinated. But um, you can see the different kind of seating that you can have. People can pick them up and use them, take them other places. And then, of course, you see the green walls. And then we also have very healthy snacks, in, uh, as well as the standard, um, in uh, the machines, the vending machines. In the, we'll have had these, some of the locations actually provide it just uh, for no cost. And then the biophilia walls. It's interesting to me, I always thought this slide was interesting because it says treadmill desk. Did you notice it says two miles per hour? So I don't know if they have held it to two miles an hour because they don't think people can like work if you're going a little faster, you know, or they, I don't know. I just thought it was interesting that I saw the two miles per hour. Then these are some examples. This is like going into an office. And again, it's, it is such a, an amazing manner in which to convey information. And it does give you quite a different feel from a traditional older style office. You walk in the, in the, in the lobbies, you walk in the doors, and now you're starting to feel like you are in an innovative location. You are in a space where people care about you having the most up-to-date technology. And you are in a space where people care about how you feel when you're in the spaces. Now, we no longer have, po in all these 175 locations, we have no more paper posters at all. They're just gone. And I'll show you. The nice thing about this is that this content can be managed locally. So we can do global information from a global standpoint. We can push that out. But the local uh, offices can also manage some of their very specific ones. Like this Saturday is the EY. We'll meet it for Earth Day at you know, XYZ and that sort of thing. But you'll see that the posters change. And if you look at some of the topics, I think some of the topics are as important as showing you the visual. So you can see how can your network help us shape the future. Uh, top 10 uh, lead urban legends. Did you know interesting things about the firm or people? All these are posters that you can target to what you really want to messaging that you want to do. Tax chat. Now this is an interesting one. This is Detroit. And it's a collaboration area. And the artist is one of the local uh, famous graffiti artists in Detroit. And then on the right hand side you can see the kinds of things. There'll be booths, there'll be work boards around the window so you can be looking, overlooking the city, that sort of thing. Um, lighting, form tables, uh, those. Now, one of the things that uh, the real estate firm did really well, I think, this past few years, is that they took the time to take a pause and generate a very detailed playbook of every phase of every project. Within those phases, there were components. Within those components were the key metrics. Uh, what were the milestones? Uh, who was responsible, et cetera, et cetera. And what they've done, we worked with them, and they have embedded our team, ready, into every spot where we can make a big impact early in the process. And this is one example on the right-hand side, as, for example, where we would be able to uh, provide guidance uh, some people, if you don't have this expertise when you're beginning these projects, you could come across vendors that will just sell you all sorts of things in all different sizes, and certain things can be inappropriate in certain areas. 
uh, one of the things we found in one of the areas is that um, there's some places you might not want to put um, a digital messaging board. Maybe it's the top of stairwell as you're walking down and it's there. So do you want people looking there when they're like going down, like, you know, and things like that. And some, pla some screens are too small for the kind of content you want to be displayed in that area. So we get a chance to do this early on in the process. It's made all the difference in the world. Here's some other examples. And again, these are, these are live now and being deployed, and these are 175. Uh, and all of these that you see right here, most of these companies, especially in the larger cities, have this ready to go for you and are happy for you to use it. And it's not that difficult to connect. Uh, reader boards. So meetings today, uh, you can have the news crawlers along the bottom, what kind of weather. Uh, and all this is dynamically updated. And again, a lot of these are services that you can subscribe to, so it's a matter of you just connecting, and then the content takes care of itself. And then you have traffic screens. You're getting ready to leave for the day. What is, where, where's the, uh, the traffic jams and so forth? And these are real, so these are screenshots from the real things in the office. And it shows updated, it'll, it'll show all day long, and it really helps people. And this is real too, it's up and running. And this is one of those kinds of things that it's really nice to see. It's not intrusive on people at all, and it's just a, a, a thing that is, it's, an, it's not a data privacy issue. And so it's something that's a pleasant thing that can be done, recognizing people a little bit, that sort of thing. And then there are sprinkler feeds. This is a service, a special kind of service that you can get. Um, it, this happens to be uh, feeds from our EY Global. And it features like find out more things and you can take, you actually can take your phone and use it with a QR code and it gives you more information. Um, one of the pilots we have in our, um, in, a, in our Hoboken office, I thought was pretty cool, is that the dartboard, we have a dartboard, that were on the wall is you play darts and that sort of thing, but then you could hold up your phone to it and you could see the time that happy hour was on your phone. And people, you know, love those kinds of things. And it, it does make you feel that you are in a more advanced technological place. And uh, this is Milan. This is just another look. It's, it's definitely more of an Italian, you know, from like I think of fashion a little bit. It's a little bit more uh, crisp like that. So, you know, the bottom line at the end of the day comes, you know, this is great, looks good, sounds like a really good plan, easy to do, the team's doing a great job, all that's fine. But what ha how much does this cost? What does it mean at the end of the day? How does it affect the firm's bottom line? Is the effort and the uniqueness, the innovation, how does that affect the bottom line? After all, you're a company and you do have to uh, be able to make the money. So I have a couple of slides that shows return on investment. The first one is an older slide and we took these surveys a little bit, a few years into the process and mainly it was so that we could determine if we were going in the right direction. So I'll just give you a moment to take a look at that. So when we started seeing this, we felt confident that we were moving in the right direction. Okay. Now I do have a more recent one and from a month ago. And it was just, uh, you know, verified and validated by finance and the firm and all those sorts of things. And so this is the one from a month ago. So that's our story about uh, our impact on the firm and our team, the Ready team. And thank you for listening and we'll open it up for questions. Do you have any questions? Yes. Question on all those video walls. I think one of the challenges I've seen is who manages the content? I know you, you talked about like different um, services you subscribe to, but who's actually who are you working with to kind of 
Well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can work with some, uh, you know, some s uh, services firms, but we do it ourselves. We can do it from a global brand and marketing standpoint, can manage the global side of it. But the local, we have uh, groups called Creative Services um, in our, all of our locations, and they can manage your local content. And so you don't have to go out to anybody else. Yes, ma'am? Well, that's interesting. Um, Paul, did you, you might want to answer that one. It was about who actually manages the actual fit outs, like so putting up the wall, putting up the video screens and so forth. And I know uh, Vance handled it a little bit different, but. Yeah, so we have AV integrators that come in and work with the design and construction team. So they actually handle all the AV equipment, uh, um, also doing the custom work for the video walls, etc. But so when you guys started going down the path of updating all the offices in 2012, did you um, get to do the actual beyond the AV? Is that internal or is that internal? I'm sorry. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's a lot of when you, um, when you started going down the path, did you decide as you entered the new sites, was it internal team that put the advantage of that or did you fix your coordinator? So we have the global real estate team that handles the leasing, they handle the design and construction, um, but we use external design firms, um, external PM firms to manage the, the entire project and they handle all you know, the GCs, et cetera. So there are a lot of players that are involved, a lot of external, but some internal that just oversee everything. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for coming, and have a good time tonight. <laughs>